Hello again. Today we continue with computer system architecture course, programming the basic computer program loops. In the last two videos, we discussed machine language, assembly language, and the assembler. And today our topic is program loops. A program loop is a sequence of instructions that are executed many times, each time with a different set of data. All programming languages include several structures for implementing loops, such as the for, do, do while, and others. Here we have a Fortran program that forms the sum of 100 integer numbers. A system program that translates a program written in a high-level programming language such as the above to a machine language program is called a compiler. A compiler is a more sophisticated program than an assembler. Some compilers use an assembly language as an intermediate step in the translation. The first statement, the dimension statement, instructs the compiler to reserve 100 locations in memory for 100 operands. The values of operands are entered by using the input statement not listed here. The second line forms the compiler that the numbers are of type integer. If they were of type real, the compiler would have to reserve locations for floating point numbers. These two statements are non executable statements and are similar to the pseudo instructions in an assembly language. Here we have the assembly language program to add two numbers using the instruction set of the basic computer. Suppose we want to store the operands starting from location 150 in hexadecimal. This is done by the pseudo instruction here, line 18, or 150, which specifies the origin of operands. The operands are not known during the compilation or assembling process. The compiler or assembler just reserves these locations. We need for the operands 100 locations. Starting from the location 150 in hexadecimal. So except the location 150, we need 99 other locations. 99 in decimal equals 2. 99 divided by 16 is 6, and the remainder is 3, and 6 by 16, 0, and here 6. 99 in decimal equals 2, 6, 3 in hexadecimal. So the location is from 150 in hexadecimal added with 6, 3 is 3. 5 plus 6b, 1. This means that the locations 150 to 1b3 should be reserved for the operands. The line numbers here are for reference only and they are not part of the translated program. To organize a loop, we need to set up a pointer and a counter. In these instructions, the address of the first operand, ADS, is loaded into accumulator and then stored in the location PTR. In the next two instructions, the value of the counter, which is in decimal minus 100, 
is loaded into accumulator and stored in CTR location. Then we organize the loop. According to this instruction, the contents of memory location added by PTR, since we have here indirect address sync, are added to the contents of accumulator. And the result is stored in the accumulator. After that, increment and the skip F0 PTR. Here we increase the pointer PTR to point to the next operand. And this instruction, increment and skip F0 PTR, is used to add one to the address PTR. And since the address is a positive number, a skip will never occur. Next, increment and skip F0 CTR. Now CTR is minus 99. And since it is not zero, we repeat executing these instructions till we have here zero. In this case, if we have in CTR zero, then we skip this instruction and exit the loop. When we reach this instruction, we'll have in the accumulator the sum of memory locations starting from location 150 till location 1B3 in hexadecimal. And according to this statement, this value is stored in location sum. The program introduces the idea of a pointer and a counter, which can be used together with the indirect address operation to form a program loop. Pointer points to the address of the current operand, and the counter counts the number of times that the program loop is executed. In computers with multiple processors, for example, if we have the accumulator and other registers, R1, R2, we can load the address of the first operand into register R1, initialize the counter R2, for example, to minus 100, clear the accumulator to zero, and then we can start the loop by adding the memory location addressed by R1 to the accumulator. Then we increment the pointer R1, increment the counter R2, and next we check R2. If R2 is zero, we are done, and if not, we repeat. When processor registers are used as pointers and counters, they are called indexed registers. And we will discuss indexed registers in chapter eight. In the basic computer, the only processor register capable of performing arithmetic and logic operations is the accumulator. So for the pointer and the counter, we use memory locations as was shown in our program. In the next meeting, we will discuss programming, arithmetic, and logic operations. For today, that's all. Thank you.